Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Paul. I'm going to do a quick video here. I recently had the chance to fly the Icon A5 from Seattle, Washington to Spokane. You know, a lot of people probably wonder, you know, how fast does the A5 go or what's your cruise speed or what al altitude should you go in the, the route that we were told to take. And what was, it was pretty easy to find just looking at the sectional was to take I-90, which is also called the pass, right? So obviously when you're going on a cross country flight, one of the things you want to keep in mind you want to stay around a lot of people if you can or be able to have some roads somewhere if you really needed to put the plane down uh, you'd have that option the i-90 at most points here is about 2500 feet um you know there are some peaks uh, surrounding you but you know obviously if you stay within this pass here you don't have to worry about you know flying 9500 or 11500 which for a trip like this we thought about 5500 but we went up to 7500 just to play it safe, uh, that gave us about 5,000 feet from the road. So again, on a cross-country trip, for those scoring at home, the A5 is a pretty standard uh, glide distance. It's about one and a half. Um, so basically, you know, if you're 5,000 feet AGL, that gives you 7,500 feet to work with. So I wanted to point out the glide feature on ForeFlight. It's a really good tool. So basically, if you're traveling along, if you're using ForeFlight, I'm sure Garmin Pilot has something similar to this. But if you're traveling along and you're flying, you can plug in your glide ratio and it'll give you the rings showing you um, if you, you know, if you want to cut a corner and not go over the I-90 the whole way and maybe go around a peak or something along those lines, which we reached in our route here that you'll see, um, the glide shows you that you can do that. So this is a really cool feature um, if you guys aren't familiar with it. So you can see the cascades around us. We got some pretty cool photos. I mean, Mount Rainier basically follows you the whole time. In terms of airspeed, um, the A5 is known for the angle of attack indicators. So you don't fly airspeed a whole lot, at least when you're going into your turns or when you're landing or you know steep turns or what have you when you know you're you're more concerned about the energy of the wing opposed to airspeed in and of itself. Um, but one of the things that you do pay attention for in the airspeed with the Icon A5 is your cruise performance, obviously. So if I can pull up the uh, Icon Sport Flying Operations, if you fly at 60 knots, that gives you a much lower fuel flow, but it also really increases the time in flight. So basically what you're trying to find is that perfect blend between time and fuel efficiency. That magic number is really 80 knots, and that's what we decided to fly or try to get close to. We had a tailwind flying west to east. And what that does is that gives you still a very low fuel flow, about 4.6 gallons per hour. But if you look at the time, for, for us, we are flying a 250 nautical mile flight. We had two legs to it, but disregard that for the moment. Three hours and eight minutes is what you get on 80 knots. So for those wondering what the range is, I got your range and then some, here's your fuel burn. Other things worth mentioning is when do you decide to stop, right? So we had two of us. We could have gone, you know, our flight was roughly 250 nautical miles. We probably could have made it in one stop. But due to the weight uh, and the useful load of the A5, you can see us, uh, you know, you got Alex and myself. We're a couple of corn-fed guys. I mean, Alex had the waffle at the Hilton this morning. I did not. The milk was curdled, so I decided to just go on an empty stomach marginal weight savings nevertheless so ergo we decided to land at an airport called grant county and that's the next thing i'll focus on in this video again i'm a low time pilot i've got a fair amount of time in, in los angeles that's about it uh grant county is an it's basically an international airport there's five runways i'll pull up the chart here we decided to contact uh approach grant county approach before going into the airfield one because i think you have to if i remember the chart but two, because of the, we wanted to at least get an idea of what runways they were working off of. Contact engine Chinook Approach, 128.75, Big Ben 3. Okay, yeah, Grant County Approach, uh, good morning. Icon 632 Bravo Whiskeys, 15 miles to the west, inbound for Grant County with Hotel. Number 632 Bravo Whiskey, Grant County Approach, altimeter 29099, you do have the current information in Grant County. Roger, thanks. Number 632 Bravo Whiskey, Roger, and uh, C Type Aircraft. Yeah, Light Sport Icon A5, 632 Bravo Whiskey. 632 Bravo Whiskey, Roger. Good. Looks like they are landing south at Grand County Contact Tower 128.0, and they'll get you set up. Great, 28.0, uh, 632 Bravo Whiskey, thanks. Grand County, good morning. Icon 632 Bravo Whiskey is 10 miles to the west, inbound with hotel. 
Icon 632 Bravo Whiskey, Grand County Tower, uh, Roger. And it would be right downwind in ray 18 and report three miles southwest of the field. Uh, right 18 will report three miles southwest of the field. 632 Bravo Whiskey, next. So, yeah, he basically said you're set up to the south, handed us off to the tower. And that tower ran us on on 18. So I'll bring up the picture here so you can see if you're flying into Grant County, you know, for those flying in, even if you never go to Grant County, it gives you a little perspective on what it's like, how unknown a new airport will feel if you're new to cross countries or if you're thinking about ferrying your A5 yourself. Um, it can be challenging. You might not come across this airport, but you could come across one with some challenges in and of itself. So, uh, you know, when I was doing a little research, some pl my, or my flight planning, I should say, I figured maybe we'd go on one four, one of them. Uh, don't assume, though, that because there's five runways, they're just going to put you in the biggest ones, obviously. The A5, they're probably going to put you in the smallest one or whatever they happen to be working and get you out of the wake, wake turbulence. There's a lot of military traffic at this airport. A lot of 747s that are delivering cherries. So 747s full of cherries. So we got the uh, runway 18, which, you know, as we started getting closer to it, I kept bugging um, Alex, my co-pilot here, uh, just to make sure I had the right runway. I was looking at the right thing. Why not? You know, use your uh, co-pilot if you can, point it out. Traffic to the left, out of the right. All right, you got 2,200 to level off. There's our traffic in sight. Yep, there's 36. Icon 2 Bravo Whiskey, traffic your followings approaching base, runway 18 cleared to land, wind 190 at 5. Keep your base turn west of runway 32 left, the short parallel. You know, I, I don't have a ton of time landing the A5. Again, I'm a, a young pilot or a you know, low time pilot, more or less with uh, diamond time, actually. The thing that the A5 doesn't get talked about, the thing that doesn't get talked enough about with the A5 is the visibility. The 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 canopy and the high wing behind you is probably one of the most underrated safety factors of the A5. And when you're flying in a new airport like this, you can see I'm being a little compulsive, obsessive, whatever about my scan. The A5 has the ability of, you don't have to worry about a low wing like on the diamonds that I was flying. You don't have to worry about the high wings like on the 172s. So, which we all know a lot of mid-air collisions are caused because a high wing blocks a low wing. And the A5, you have such great visibility. You can see behind you, you can see below you. Obviously you have the canopy out in front of you, but that's something that doesn't really get talked about enough. And I would even say, as the marketing director of Icon, I, I'd like to promote that more. It's something people really take in and enjoy from a view, but from a safety perspective, you're going into a new airport, you're scanning, you're unfamiliar to have that visibility all around you really gives you a good peace of mind and, and, and a heightened sense of awareness. You see here I'm a little low because again I haven't flown the A5 really that much uh, but I'm also coming from a diamond to DA40 so a lot of uh, pilots in their first time flying the A5 this is not atypical from what our uh, flight ops team says. Uh, you might come in a little low or you might feel like the airplane's sinking. One, your sight picture you're a little lower than you're accustomed to but two, a lot of people are still, I think, this is me speaking, uh, trying to fly airspeed when you really should be flying um, angle of attack. There you go, right there. Nice. But yeah, the, the visibility, hopefully you get some sense of it here. New airplane or new airport, your scan's super important. What a treat to have the A5 just be able to see all around you on a cross country flight using that four flight glide feature, knowing what your um, your speed is that you should be cruising at in the A5 that's 80 knots. Um, and then really the altitudes you can fly. I mean, you can fly 9,500 feet in the A5. You can fly at 11.5, 10.5. Uh, I want to share a little bit of this flight with you. Um, but again, guys, my name is Paul. Hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you on the next one. Thanks.